When you thought I couldn't possibly talk about walking anymore on this channel, I have discovered once again there's another angle of explaining to you the important things about walking that I haven't yet covered. And probably in hindsight is, and I know I say this a lot, but it really is probably one of the most critical areas of walking that I think would be good for you to understand in order to make your walking more efficient and to better help you understand um, what to think about when you are walking. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist and on this channel we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, mindset in the context of those of you who have suffered damage to your neurologic system with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and ultimately help you to live a happy, more fulfilled, more mobile and active life. And as I mentioned, we are going to unwrap this very complicated topic of walking. Now, for those of you who are new, I will consider this like a more in-depth explanation than some of the previous videos I've done. So in the description to this video, I am gonna link other kind of big picture videos that I've done on walking. If you are new to this channel, I highly recommend that you watch those videos first because although this isn't necessarily more complicated, it is looking at it from a different angle or looking at walking from a little bit of a different angle. And it does require you to really kind of already grasp or understand like big, big picture concepts of walking that are important to understand in the very early stages of rehab. But now, for those of you who have been in rehab for a while and you understand there's a standing phase and a swinging phase, which I've talked a lot about, how spasticity and abnormal synergy patterns impact movement during that standing phase and that swinging phase, for the most part, I have talked about walking and what I would call like one dimension or maybe two dimensions or two planes of movement. In other words, flexion and extension. And then when I talk about posture a little bit, I will talk about a little bit of side to side movement. But now again, we're gonna go one layer deep and talk about diagonals or what truly is how walking happens. And it's not one dimension, it's not two dimensional, but it's really multi-dimensional. And in order to understand that, we are gonna get a little bit technical, but I promise you it's important and it's gonna make sense and it's gonna make the exercises that I show you at the end of this video make a little bit more sense as well to really help you kind of understand how to choose exercises in specific categories. So not necessarily just me giving you exercises, but I really, really, really want you to be able to sift through Instagram, Pinterest, all these other platforms that you guys are on and you're seeing these exercises pop up, I really want you to be able to apply those exercises to your specific condition. And I think understanding this layer will help with that. So now, what are the two concepts that I'm gonna cover in this video? The first concept or kind of type or group of exercise that I want you to understand and the concept kind of goes along with the type of exercise are closed chain exercises. I do think those are probably should be the highest priority exercise. So I'm gonna explain what the, that word means and what types of exercises constitute as closed chain exercises. And then also this other big picture concept of kinetic chains. And I'm gonna explain what that word means and what I think how I think you should use it or apply it to your specific situation and the types of exercises that you should be adding into your exercise program. So first let's talk about closed chain exercises. So closed chain exercises are when a limb, an arm or a leg is fixed and the body is moving over that segment. That's different than an open chain exercise. An open chain exercise is where the limb is actually moving on a kind of stationary body. So for example, hip extension, so learning how to work those glutes, a closed chain exercise would be standing on the leg and doing something that's moving your hip into extension because that's what the glute does. An open chain exercise would be like laying down on your stomach and just lifting your leg. That's open chain because the limb is kind of moving around a fixed body, standing on the leg and doing a hip extension, maybe tucking your bottom in, which I've done in other videos, or doing a step up. That would be a 
closed chain exercise because your body is kind of moving over a fixed limb. So closed chain exercises, why do I think those are the most critical types of exercises for walking? The biggest reason and probably the one that makes the most sense is it simulates walking, right? So a lot of you don't feel stable on your leg after you've had some type of damage to a motor area or an area of the brain that controls movement. You don't feel confident on that leg when you're standing on it. So of course, a closed chain exercise would be more like specific to the movement that you're doing during walking that would be the most obvious. Now, the other component to that, or additional components to that, go back to that idea how I said that we're multidimensional or we move in multiple planes. When you're standing on a limb and the body is moving over it, you do have a tendency to work some of the deeper stabilizing muscles, and that is really critical as well. So that's why I think as far as walking, a closed chain exercise might be a better type of exercise than an open chain exercise. But standing also improves the swinging phase of walking. And that goes back to a term I mentioned back in the intro, and that was a concept of kinetic chains. In this case, the one that I'm gonna probably focus on the most in this video is the posterior kinetic chain and to a lesser degree, the anterior kinetic chains. So first, what are kinetic chains? Kinetic chains um, in reference to walking and the body is just how bones link up via joints and soft tissue structures and organs to create both stability and mobility and movement to get body movement or efficient body movement. Primarily when we are talking about kinetic chains, reciprocal movement. So movement where one arm is moving forward in the opposite leg, hence why this applies really quite nicely to walking. That is a reciprocal movement. And kinetic chains really do a good job of explaining how reciprocal movement happens. So again, the ones I'm going to focus on are the posterior kinetic chain or the posterior spiral and the anterior kinetic chain or the anterior spiral. Now these are not the only two kinetic chains, but I think they're the ones that will kind of drive home my point of why I think standing exercises are the most important to improving walking efficiency. So there's always a kinetic chain that helps with movement. And again, this is extremely simplified and I am leaving out huge chunks of this kinetic chain concept. But for simplicity and for, to really just kind of explain the exercises I'm gonna be showing later on, there's something called a ground reaction force when our foot hits the ground. So that is a part of the walking phase after your leg is in the air, it hits the ground. And what happens at that point when it hits the ground is what we call a ground reaction force. So the ground pushes in to the foot and the ankle and the body responds by pushing back into the ground. Now I am skipping some kind of steps in this, but big picture, ground pushes into the foot, body responds by pushing back into the ground via the posterior kinetic chain. And I promise you just stick with me. All of this is going to make sense when we get to the exercises. So if we didn't have this link this chain, um, this posterior kinetic chain, when the force came into our foot, we would probably just crumple to the ground because that force combined with gravity would be too much and we would just kind of crumple like an accordion. But we have this posterior kinetic chain of structures that does allow that body segment or allows the body to become a little bit more rigid and then push back into the ground. Now, what is the posterior kinetic chain made up of? And I'm just sticking to the muscles because I want the exercises to make sense. So again, I'm just trying to focus on the things that I think are the most important to you. So the posterior kinetic chain, that chain of muscles that pushes back into the ground, it is the soleus, the peroneus longus, the posterior tibialis, the vastus lateralis, the iliotibial band, the gluteus maximus, the gluteus minimus. All of those structures are part of that posterior kinetic chain on the leg that's hitting the ground or on the leg that's contacting the ground. That chain continues up to the 
latissimus dorsi is also part of that on the opposite side of the body. The SCM or the sternocleidomastoid, the posterior deltoid, the tricep, and some muscles in the wrist and hand. Those upper body muscles are the muscles on the opposite side of the body to the leg that's pushing into the ground. So if you had an involved side, when that involved leg hits the ground, this chain reaction happens of all these muscles getting activated, including muscles on the opposite side of your body. And that creates this pushing back into the ground, pushing the ground backwards, or something that brings your body forward. Now, this posterior chain generates elastic energy via the anterior chain. So I promise you stick with me because those of you that have been at this for a while, you're ready for this. You're ready to go to this deeper layer. And again, it's going to help you kind of navigate the Google and go to your favorite gurus and choose or select the best exercises that they're showing. Because there's a ton of physical therapists out there that are so creative and have really good exercises. So this is a really cool thing. And this is why I think standing is so important for walking efficiency after a stroke or a brain injury is what that does is it kind of almost puts everything on the front side or the anterior spiral kind of on a little bit of a stretch. And the best way I can explain this to visualize this is like a bow and arrow. If you draw a bow string back, when you let go of it, it just kind of releases all that energy or it springs forward. That's what kind of allows that dart to fly off of the bow. A very similar thing kind of happens theoretically in our body. The same kind of mechanism starts with the posterior kinetic chain, kind of if you can visualize this bowing the body backwards. And then when you lift the foot off the ground, it's almost very similar to releasing that bow and getting that arrow to fly as that leg will come forward via the anterior spiral or anterior chain. So what is the anterior chain made up of? Well, the anterior chain is the anterior tibialis on the leg that's coming up off the ground or the, the involved leg. The anterior tibialis, the peroneals, the muscles that bend the knee or the hamstrings, the psoas, which is a hip flexor muscle, and some abdominals on that same side of the body, as well as some abdominals on the other side of the body. These are all part of the anterior chain again. Uh, the serratus anterior, so now muscles on the opposite shoulder, kind of on the front side of that shoulder. The latissimus and the pec minor. Now remember, we are talking about reciprocal motion, so that would make sense, because all of the muscles I'm now mentioning in the opposite arm bring that shoulder forward, which is going to bring that arm forward. So more structures that are part of that anterior chain, so in the opposite shoulder, are the pec major, the anterior delt, the coracobrachialis, the subscap, elbow flexors, and wrist and hand flexors. So those are all part of that anterior chain, and it makes sense because that's how we get that arm swing. Now, why is all of this important to you? And it goes back to the whole reason for this video, and it's really to introduce kind of a new group of exercises to you that I haven't really talked about yet on this channel. So what types of exercises do I think are the most critical? First, closed chain, meaning the leg is on the ground. Now, for the most part, if the foot's on the ground, you're gonna be working more muscles in the leg, but you could also be in kneeling or half kneeling, which is also closed chain. And for some of you, an even better position, because when you take the ankle out of it, you can really just focus on the hip muscles. And then combining that with some sort of exercise that creates shoulder extension or arm extension on the opposite side, and upper body rotation. That would be activating that entire posterior chain, right? Because I talked about all those exercises, all those muscles on the back of the leg, on the leg that you're standing on, and how the other half of that posterior chain were the muscles on the opposite side of the body, on the back of the shoulder, and really all the muscles that create what we call like a counter rotation or an upper trunk rotation away from that leg. Those would all be part of the posterior kinetic chain. 
And that's why I think that those exercises combining them are really important. So again, you can do this in kneeling, you can do this in standing, you can do this in single leg standing, but if you're even earlier in the process, there are some exercises that I think tap into this posterior chain that you can do laying down that are still closed chain that are still going to activate this posterior chain. So in the exercise progression, that I'm going to show here in a minute. Be advised that I'm giving just examples of groups of exercises that I think combine the posterior chain involving the leg and the opposite arm. They're gonna involve some kind of rotation or counter rotation movement, and they are gonna progress from easiest to most challenging. For this exercise, what I'm doing is I have my stronger leg crossed over my weaker leg or the working leg and lifting the bottom, so maintaining a bridge, and then I'm doing this diagonal pattern with my arms with the resistance band. Now when you pull that band up towards over your head with the opposite arm of the leg you're bridging on, you really want to try and squeeze that shoulder blade back at the very top. Now, the critical components are making sure that you maintain that bridge while you do this. I like having the legs crossed because it'll really discourage or minimize the amount that you can use or compensate with your uninvolved leg. If you can't do that, you could definitely do this with your feet side by side. But again, you're trying to push down or really work that glute on the involved side and pull back with the opposite arm at the same time. So let me show that to you again. Stronger leg crossed over the weaker leg. I'm going to bridge up. And then really this is the working arm, the one that's pulling up. So if you don't have use of this arm or you can't hold this arm down, you can attach it to something down here or have someone hold it for you down here. And then really, again, the key really is the opposite arm or the one that's coming up. So again, if you don't have use of both arms, you can somehow figure out how to secure the opposite end of this band down. And then you're just pulling up with the opposite arm. So for this exercise, what I'm doing is I have my uninvolved leg or my stronger leg crossed over my involved leg, puts a little bit more downward pressure through the involved leg, and I'm scooted a little bit as far to the edge of the seat as I can. What that does is it does uh, require my leg to push a little bit into the ground, and then in my opposite hand, I'm pulling back with the band into a W position. Now when you do this movement, you really want to squeeze this shoulder blade back, like you're squeezing your shoulder blades together when you bring that arm back. Hold it for two to three seconds, let it go, and then bring it back again. Again, you're looking for this W position. So I'm gonna show that to you again. Kind of sitting towards the edge of the chair and then just pulling back with my opposite arm. So what I'm doing in this activity is dissociating my upper body from my lower body. I love kneeling activities for that, and it looks like an upper body activity, but what we're trying to do is rotate, more rotate those shoulders away from the weaker hip. So again, you're gonna take that resistance band, kind of wrap it around. So if we're working this right hip, we have that band wrapped around the left shoulder, and you're actually rotating away from the weaker hip. So that'll help to engage that weaker hip. So you're rotating your upper body away from that weaker hip and then just doing a little punch with that rotation. Just a little punch. Now the key to this one is making sure that you really have your hips engaged by keeping your hips in a neutral position or even a little bit of what we call a posterior tilt. So you're tucking that bottom in. You don't want any arch in your back or any sway in your back and you wanna make sure that you're not leaning back. So nice straight line from your knee all the way up to your shoulder, nice vertical line, and then you're just punching and rotating. Punch and rotate. Again, that's gonna really engage this hip here. So I'm rotating away. 
really engaging this hip right here on the back side as I do that little rotation. So for this exercise, what we're focused on is really engaging the right glute in the position that I'm set up in right now. And at the same time, kind of activating or involving the left posterior side of the shoulder. So the keys to this one is to squeeze your bottom on the right side. So this would be the working leg. And then this is the working arm, the opposite arm pulling that arm back. So really engaging the muscles on the back of the shoulder. Now you wanna make sure you're not sitting your bottom back and that you're not swaying your back. So we call this a posterior pelvic tilt. So you wanna stay nice and neutral in a posterior tilt. So you're tilting the pelvis backwards by squeezing the bottom muscles and then just pulling back with the arm. So squeezing that bottom and pulling back with that shoulder at the same time. The variation that you can do with this one is what we call a W position. So having your arms like this, same concept, you're engaging the back of that left shoulder and squeezing that right glute at the same time. So what I'm doing for this exercise is I'm working my right hip in this case because my right leg is forward and trying to combine that with the back side of the opposite shoulder. This is working something what we call the posterior kinetic chain or the posterior spiral, a critical component of walking, getting through that standing phase. The first movement, we're going into that W position, really focusing on squeezing that shoulder blade as you bring the band back. And then bringing the arm down and back. In both cases, squeezing that shoulder blade to the back. If you do have a foot that tends to roll, really focus on pushing down through the arch of your foot or having that weight more towards the arch of your foot as you bring that band back. Also pay special attention that your hips stay relatively square to the front. And then again, just pull that band back. Now, I know that was a ton of information. I hope it was helpful and not too confusing, but this is gonna be a series of videos. And what I'm gonna show you in next week's video or part two is kind of how to take this one layer deeper, keep being mindful or keeping in mind those of you that have spasticity or abnormal synergy patterns. So again, I'm gonna talk about this idea of the posterior kinetic chain, why I think it's important to involve exercises that challenge the posterior kinetic chain, and then what are some modifications or additional exercises that you might wanna consider if you do have a lot of spasticity. So that is going to be in next week's video. As usual, I enjoyed spending time with you guys today. I love interacting with you guys in the comments. Please keep leaving those comments. You guys are 1000% the inspiration for every single one of these videos. And some of you that are more experienced and you've been at this for a while, gosh, you teach me things in the comments. But what it also reveals to me is that some of you do wanna go a little bit deeper. So that's what I'm hoping that I did in this video. So keep leaving your comments. Again, I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good day. Thank you.